Confucius very wisely said, a man who understands the Tao in the morning may die with content in the evening. Because when you understand, you don't put your hope in time. Time won't solve a thing. So when we enter into the, the, the practice of meditation, of yoga, we are doing something radically unlike other human activities. Of course, the way yoga is sold in the United States, like everything else, is that it's supposed to be good for you. It isn't. It has nothing to do with anything that's good for you. It's the one activity which you do for its own sake and not because it's good for you, not because it will lead anywhere, because you cannot go to the place where you are now, obviously. The yoga is to be completely here and now. That's why the word yoga means join. Get with it. Be completely here and now. This is the real meaning of concentration, to be in your center. And the Christian word for sinning in Greek is amatanin, which means to miss the point. And the point is eternal life, which is here and now. Come to your senses. Yoga is defined in Sanskrit, in the Yoga Sutra, Yoga Sthita Vritti Nirodha. Difficult to translate, but roughly. Vritti is turning, see, like a wheel, and Chitta is consciousness. Turnings in consciousness, in other words, the attempt of the mind to catch hold of itself, which is what we call thinking, worrying. So we could say loosely, yoga is the cessation of thinking. It's not the cessation of awareness, but of symbolizing, trying to catch, touch reality in terms of thoughts, symbols, descriptions, definitions. Give it up. It's not easy because we do it habitually. But until there is silence of the mind, it is almost impossible to understand. Eternal life, that is to say, eternal now. If you could come to the place where you suspend conceptions, Conceptions in Sanskrit are called vikalpa. And so this state is called near vikalpa, not conceptual. And this it will be basic to everything I'm going to talk to you about. To understand non-verbal reality, non-conceived reality, 
what I call suchness, tathata. It's really very easy, it's too easy. That's why it's difficult. But that when you are fully aware and not thinking, you will notice some amazing uh, absences. <laughs> there is no past. Can you hear anything past, incidentally? Can you hear anything future? They're just not there to the plain sense of one's ears. Ears are easiest to begin with. Can you hear anyone listening to something else? Can you hear the listener? No? Well then presumably it's not there. Then you become again as a child. And simply forget all that you ever were told and contemplate what is. All these ghosts go away. How weird. But they just go. And then you enter into the eternal state. Well, there's no problem. William, you go back and you collect your opinions again. You think, well, that won't do. How, how can I be practical and be in that sort of state? Well, I remember in the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus said um, a lot of things about this. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet, Suleiman in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. And if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, faithless ones? Wow. So, do not worry about tomorrow, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or how shall we clothe ourselves? All oh, the rabble seeks after these things. Sufficient to the day is the worry of it. Nobody ever preaches a sermon on that text. Never. I've heard lots of sermons. And never one on that one. Because people say, look, that's all very well because Jesus was the boss's son. <laughs> and, and he knew, you see, that he was really in charge of the universe. And he's nothing to worry about. But we have to be practical. Oh? What do you suppose the gospel was? The good news. You know, it never got out. <laughs> you too are the boss's son. <clears throat> that was the gospel. If Jesus had lived in India, they wouldn't have put him to death. Because everybody in India knows that we're all God in disguise. So if he had said, I and the Father are one, in India they would have said, hooray! You know? <laughs> Lots of people in India know that perfectly well. But here, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh that's a no-no. <laughs> Who the hell do you think you are? You own the place? You keep your position. You're just a creature, a critter. <laughs>